Hey, so here I have the Kendrite K210 development board and it's basically this this board that appeared on Indiegogo a few months ago and it's a board targeted at um, AI development. It has some hardware for convolutional neural networks and which are great for image recognition and things like that. But, but today I'm not going to be really doing that. I'm just going to do a brief overview of what you can do with it and um, with MicroPython. MicroPython is a language written by Damien George. It's basically just like Python except designed for embedded systems. So, you know, it's somewhat cut back, but it's pretty damn similar. And someone who, if you are familiar with Python, you'll have no problem with MicroPython. It's based on Python C. Um, so, sorry, C Python, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, here we have um, something I've made with it. And this video basically goes through how I made it. And it also gives and I'm also going to demonstrate a few things the board comes with like um, a Nintendo NES emulator. What? Yes, it has one for some reason. Okay, so we're just going to look at the MicroPython kernel here. So MicroPython is a language created by Damien George 2014. It's been developed ever since. It's a version of Python which runs on microcontrollers um, and in this case it's for the Cyped May X1, um, and it's basically a pretty cut down version of Python, although it does have more features than you'd think. So, you know, of course, you've got standard um, Python things like that. You've got, you know, the, the, the syntax of Python is still around, and you can even use things like import os, os.list, dir and we can see what's on our um, on our root directory so as you can see I've got this thing called Nova.ness and that's a NES game it's an open source game um, it's on github so all we need to do to run it is go import NES NES.init0 and as you can see there's Nova the squirrel so let's start the game I'm pressing M and oh no story mode I don't want to do a story mode and there we go. Okay, so as you can see, it can run things like Ness the Squirrel. Um, and you know that's that's not that's not all this device can do. You can do plenty more than that. Um, if I could figure out how to bloody close the program. Okay, so let's just do a really basic program. I'm going to just render the the camera to the screen and display the FPS over the top. And this is basically the same as one of the um, example documents, and it's really quite simple. Um, and they've provided a fair bit of flexibility for you, um, although I would prefer their C library, uh, C++ library work, but can't get it to compile. Got really strange errors because I was trying to get Doom to run, but I couldn't get their library to run, their free RTOS or their standalone library. Uh, that was kind of annoying. So RGB565 is 5 bits for red, 6 bits for blue, 5 bits for green, red, green, blue. So that's what the sensor outputs, so that's the format we're using. This is just setting the frame size, think means the image size. Now the sensor's powered on, and I'm configuring it for 30 FPS. Let's loop forever. Now we can get the system tick using clock dot tick, and then we just and we can draw we can draw the string on the screen in a similar way to printf. Now these are the coordinates and here we have the string format specifier here. So I want it to be print printed with 2.1 floating point and then after that it's going to say fps. And then we're literally just going to hook in the fps value and that won't work because that's not how you do that. And this is the color of the string, and I'm going to make it, I'm going to make super gray. Hopefully that doesn't blend in with everything. Probably will. Don't really know what scale does. I assume it just scales the text. Um, it's probably the font size, but I don't know what the initial font size is, so that's not really useful, is it? Okay, so lcd.display image. So it does appear that the, the screen is flipped, so that's a bit annoying. Um, so I've just, I've just ended the program, and... There's probably some basic graphics commands. We just want some graphics commands. At the start, we issued this draw string command. So image draw string. So I'm guessing in the image library, there's some other commands like draw rectangle. 
Okay, so after fiddling around for a little while, I got it running a moving rectangle which changes color. Nice. Bounces off walls and things. Um, and it also renders some text. So I'll show you the code now. Um, this actually has an internal editor, a Python editor, which um, I believe is actually a Python script itself. So the editor can be opened just like this. And I am opening the file called game pi no lol.py that's not a good name okay here it is so i'll just go through what it does so the first thing it does is import the image library then the lcd library then the time library and the clock library sensor and the ability to create random values it initializes the lcd it initializes an instance of the clock class and it sets up the camera why am i setting up the camera well no reason other than i don't know how to create an image which is the same size as the screen because I couldn't find a constructor that had width and height so whatever um, so I took a snapshot and then I cleared it that was redundant and then I get these temporaries um, the position in the X then the Y the width of the box and the velocity of the box and then I have this variable called redness which actually is more like intensity of color and then I create some temporaries which store the width and height of the LCD and I have some debugging messages which just print what's going on in this case it's printing while is starting. Then the, the loop logic starts. Um, this logic here handles the box bouncing off walls in the x direction. This logic here handles the box bouncing off walls in the y direction. This increments the position of the object with the velocity. Really simple. And this draws the rectangle. Oh, actually, this draws the string bouncy rectangle with the color defined by redness. It's basically how red the text is. Um, now that that variable name falls apart when I put redness into the green component of this color yeah I should change the name of that variable um, but in this editor it's extremely tedious so I didn't so and then it draws the rectangle at the position um, px and py with the width wx and wy and there we go and we increment the the redness wrap it around the maximum color and display the image on the screen. That is really all that is needed to do this. Um, so, so to run this, it's really simple too. OS dot list or do I have the files? Yes, I do. With open lol lol dot pi as file. Now all of this is actually done on the micro itself. So I'm in putty talking over the serial port. So the interpreter here is actually handled by the micro and there we go we have a bouncy rectangle with the bouncy rectangle string printed up here and as you can see it's a it's a very bouncy rectangle um, and the red's going up and down and the green's going up and down it's just like it should be yay and there we go we've filled up the lcd with a completely pointless green blob anyway so that's just a few things this module can do. Um, it's really tailored towards machine learning and AI. It's got hardware dedicated to, to convolutional neural network things, which are great for in image classification. So this process is actually pretty impressive. It is a 64-bit processor, which means you don't get such a hit for precision when you're using higher precision values. That's fantastic. And it's got, it's got hardware dedicated to machine vision. So things like convolutional neural networks are lower have low, lower overhead in this type of device than they would ordinarily and ordinarily they have a lot of overhead and those type of things in the convolutional neural networks can be used for things like um, image classification face detection face tracking um, all kinds of things like that and yeah it's pretty cool today just for a quick look i just did some pointless green square moving anyway bye